Hello and welcome to Ecositane, the channel of the builder specialized in wooden structures for housing. Today we will be presenting a lovely project, um, a roof uh, respectful of local architecture in a schist village. Uh, we were contacted by a client that desired to rehabilitate his uh, ruin uh, in total respect of local architecture. So, of course, uh, we are a Cositana, so the structure of the roof will always be wood. Now, we could have used um, chestnut beams, uh, but in the end we settled on, on uh, laminated beams that gave actually a very nice, uh, elegant structure um, to that roof and also allowed us to give uh, modern standards of of strength, of um, solidity and of flexibility to that roof. Now Portugal always used wood to make uh, roof structures and that's what we used um, that allowed us to make different wood structures uh, in different situations. Uh, that house had different roofs. In the interior of the house uh, the roof had three slops that allowed us to, to make a very nice um, star truss whereas in the, what we could call the barn section that would probably be the living room someday uh, we use the, the, the very common um, uh, triangular truss that you see uh, a lot in Portugal and uh, that roof uh, allowed us to use not only um, a very common architecture for uh, houses in villages but also uh, allowed us to put lots of weight on it and that's what you want in a roof uh, you want the roof to be solid and you want to put on it insulation and that's what we did we used uh, modern insulation and uh, we've been working for 30 years now my dad started the company a little, a little bit more than 30, 30 years ago we were in call the Cositana at the time and uh, we are we're always evolving the way we approach insulation and we adjust to each different project each different location and uh, you have to be humble enough to understand that there is no perfect solution, no one has a, a, the ideal formula. Uh, what you need to do is um, a very uh, personal approach to each situation. But there is one thing that we always do that works in terms of insulation, it's layering. We use different layers of insulation that allows us to give um, to the client a very modern uh, roof in terms of insulation, of um, uh, soundproofing and also in terms of um, how it works with Portugal weather. Some of you that know the Beira know that this is the, the Barbarians region, the Celtic nest of Portugal and this is a very harsh land sometimes in terms of weather. Um, we have very cold uh, icy rains in the winter and then we have very warm summers with wind blowing from the, the Sahara Desert and um, therefore you need an insulation that can work uh, in all situations and the way we use insulation uh, is making sure that each different layer has its own purpose some of them are structural, some of them are, are waterproofing, some of them work better with the cold or against uh, heat and also some of them are very good against uh, the sun's uh, radiation that can go through the, the ceramic tiles and that's something nice because you can have a very modern roof in terms of insulation uh, disguised inside uh, a very traditional looking roof of course because this is a roof in Portugal uh, we use ceramic tiles, ceramic roof tiles we use the model that looks like the old uh, ceramic tiles that were usually used by, by uh, more humble people, the, the capi bica, so you know the, the under tile and the upper tile, you know. And um, what that means is you can have now uh, modern uh, suppliers of roof tiles that will give you um, ceramic tiles that will answer uh, contemporary standards of uh, solidity, of waterproofing, of uh, how they go against one another but then they will look blackened like they were in a, in a, um, in a wooden oven and that's the aspect that was um, required for that particular place. Regarding the walls near the, the roof, uh, we used also the same idea of working with local materials. 
So we used local clay. We went behind the, the construction site and we dig on the spot some local clay and we made our own mixture using clay, using lime, using a, a very thin uh, sand. Sometimes you can also use white or grey cement. There is no um, perfect formula. There is two things you have to consider. One, uh, for instance, in the case of clay, you will have sometimes drier clay, sometimes clay that is more wet, sometimes clay that is darker, clay that is lighter. And uh, when you get the, the mixture that you want, you have to write it down and use the same mixture all the week to make sure it's always the same. And also you have to understand that in the next house you're restoring, in another spot, another village, the formula will have to change and to adjust, adjust to that. Side note, don't put too much lime. Lime is interesting for the rubbery aspect it will give, but if you put too much lime, it will crack easily. That's not the purpose. You want something that looks old, but you want something that will be solid. In the end, when we're talking about uh, restoring or rehabilitation, which are two different concepts, uh, restoring is uh, trying to conserve as much as possible the original um, shell, uh, and the materials present. Uh, rehabilitating is actually uh, allowing the possibility to bring newer materials but that will be as, res as much as possible respectful of what the, the essence of what you're rehabilitating. A house, a windmill, a castle, doesn't matter. Sometimes something is completely in ruins and there is no point in trying to uh, restore what is there. Um, and that's when we're talking about rehabilitating and that's one of our, our specialties, rehabilitating uh, local um, houses in granite, villages, in schist, stone, uh, ruins. Anyway, I hope you like the images I've shown. Uh, please subscribe our YouTube channel. Um, also, post your feedback and comments, your experience. And uh, I hope we'll see you again to, to show you more uh, projects. Anyway, thank you so much. See you soon. Bye-bye.